the Saturn V rocket blasts Apollo 11 out of Earth's atmosphere. Just 12 minutes later, they're in orbit, and our greatest adventure begins. That's one small step for man. It's people kind of pausing and saying, I'm part of this much bigger thing where humanity has now set foot on another body in the solar system. And they were very excited about it. What if I told you everything you know about the moon is false? Over 50 decades ago, humans reached an outstanding milestone in space exploration by successfully landing on the moon. Although we all celebrate NASA's achievement, some aspects of the Apollo 11 mission have remained enveloped in mystery as it had taken decades to uncover the malfunctions that left the NASA astronauts momentarily stranded during the mission. How come Neil Armstrong has finally burst into tears, saying that the moon is not what we think it is? Apollo 11 has very simply been given the mission of carrying men to the moon, landing them there, and bringing them safely back. Join us as we lift the veil on the secret truths from the moon's dark side that will shatter foundations and ignite cosmic curiosity. In 1999, a poll was conducted to gauge Americans' opinion on the moon landing being the most remarkable achievement in human history. Surprisingly, only 39% of the survey replied in affirmative, while 51% did not. A more significant concern was that most people believed the Apollo moon landing was an intricate hoax orchestrated by NASA. The claim behind this is due to a belief that the United States government staged this operation in a bid to outpace the Soviet Union in the space race and gain a political advantage, using the photograph taken as a form of proof, pointing out alleged evidence like the absence of stars or the flag appearing to ripple in the air in the airless lunar environment, confirming their belief that it was staged. What is the reason for the lack of confidence in NASA? We cannot generally blame the people as this suspicion stems from a lack of transparency by NASA. Adding to the complexity of the situation, Neil Armstrong, a key astronaut involved in the mission, has made intriguing claims that the moon holds more secrets than what we have been led to believe. He says that the nature and characteristics of the moon differ from all that we have been told and led to believe. These revelations have sparked curiosity, intensified discussions, and chaos, leaving us in the cusps of a potential scientific paradigm shift. Let's look into a few essential contexts necessary for this news. For centuries, the moon has fascinated humanity with its natural beauty and mysteries. Long before the advent of advanced astronomical observatories and telescopes, our ancestors were fascinated by the celestial wonder with limited equipment. Exploring this wonder and curiosity, they diligently observed the moon's phases, studied the duration of lunar eclipses, and knitted myths around its influence. They discovered that the moon controlled the tides and even impacted our calendars. Some even went ahead to speculate its effect on mental health. As technology advanced, automated probes like the Soviet Lunar, the American Ranger, and surveyor programs were sent to orbit the moon. These missions then provided valuable information about the moon's condition and geology. With each discovery, the desire to send more humans to the moon grew stronger. The state race between the United States and the USSR during the Cold War fueled this ambition as it became a matter of national pride and technological superiority. In 1961, the United States launched the ambitious Apollo mission. Its goal was nothing short of sending a man to the moon and bringing him back safely before the decade's end. This was an enormous undertaking that required substantial funding. The Apollo program involved multiple stages of development and testing. Suborbital and orbital flights, rendezvous and docking maneuvers, lunar orbiting and landing simulations, and extravehicular activities were all parts of the rigorous preparations. The pinnacle of the Apollo program arrived on the 16th of July, 1969. The world held its breath as the Apollo mission took off. I agree with Jerry. Use the moon's gravity, slingshot them around. No, the LEM will not support three guys for that amount of time. It barely holds. Two. I mean, we've got to do a direct abort. We do an about face, we bring the guys right home right now. On the 20th of July, 1969, 256 GMT, 
Neil Armstrong's famous words, one small step for man, one giant leap for humanity, reverberated as he became the first man to walk on the moon. Soon after, Aldrin joined, and for two hours, they explored the moon, after which they planted the flag and reunited with Collins, who stayed back in the ship to manage the undocking process system monitoring, a pivotal juncture as the lunar module separated from Columbia. He safeguarded the command module. He was keen on observation. As Columbia orbited the moon, he took valuable photos that contributed immensely to lunar understanding. Burdened beyond the technical, Collins bore a psychological weight. He was also the mission's linchpin, connecting Earth to lunar exploration. Any misstep could have brought danger to the crew and mission. Often described as pivotal, Collins' insight and reflection offer insight into how the journey transformed him and the world at large. At the point where he is left alone, he is usually referred to as the loneliest man alive. However, he views this experience as serene solitude and not stark loneliness. The Loneliest Man Alive In 1966, Collins embarked on his first spaceflight as the pilot of Gemini 10 alongside John Young, a fellow pilot. During this mission, they performed two rendezvous with other spacecrafts, and Collins conducted two spacewalks. Initially, he was slated to be part of the Apollo 8 mission, but had to undergo surgery, which prevented him from participating. However, he was later reassigned to the historic Apollo 11 mission, making him part of the crew that would make the first ever human crewed moon landing, which is an extraordinary achievement. Aside from the listed assignments he handled, he relayed the photographs and lunar observations to mission control in real time. These observations provided valuable information about the moon's compositions and were instrumental in advancing our understanding of the lunar terrain. One aspect of Collins' duties carried a weight that surpassed all others. He was also acting as the intermediary between the moon and the Earth, recognizing that in the case of unforeseen circumstances, he would be the only survivor. Collins's precision and professionalism contributed mainly to the completion of the Apollo 11 mission, holding the distinction of being the first person to experience the profound solitude of the moon's far side. This solitude allowed him to see the Earth with fresh eyes and appreciate its breathtaking beauty. During his time in space, he observed some unique signals that seemed to originate from sources beyond our world, which left a lasting impression on him. He meticulously documented them, handing his findings to NASA officials who have kept the information hidden for over five decades. It remains a fascinating journey to this day. The Journey from the Moon Back to Earth After the reunion, they began their journey home. On July 24, 1969, they splashed upon the Pacific Ocean, completing their epic mission, achieving the global mission of lunar exploration. Since ancient times, the moon has captivated humanity with its phases, myths, and impact on tides have stirred fascination. Can the moon affect us mentally? What is the essence of the moon? These questions sparked a goal of reaching its surface to find out. To answer these questions, the Apollo program was launched and aimed at sending a man and bringing him back by the decades. These audacious quests demanded innovation, courage, and boundless resources, embracing orbital flights, docking maneuvers, lunar simulations, and more. The challenge was colossal, but the mission was clear, achieve the impossible. It wasn't just about the planting of a flag, but also national pride and technological prowess. The moon's mystery yielded to their footsteps, signifying a defining moment in the Earth's history, uniting a world divided by politics, showcasing the infinite potential of human determination and science. Renowned scientist Michio Kaku has shared his thoughts on efforts to recreate that historic feat. China has boldly sent a robotic spacecraft to recreate this, making it the third country to do this. As more countries look forward to recreating this, Kaku points out the primary sinister motives that may arise due to this. In this regard, significant countries such as Russia and China are actively developing hypersonic drones, rapidly becoming the preferred choice of weaponry. The moon itself lacks military powers as it requires only a few days to get there. This realization sheds a more profound light on the significant strategic aspects of space exploration and the potential military implications it may bring. 
However, the need for advanced weaponry on Earth, especially the development of hypersonic drones, raises legitimate concerns. This is where the United States Space Force comes into the picture. Like it or not, the reality is the battlefield is changing from planet Earth to space. This is the view of the Asian Pacific Theater, and the threat matrix in space is very different. Initially, some people may not have taken this exploration seriously, but upon closer examination, it becomes evident that it serves a crucial purpose. The U.S. controls over half of Earth's satellites, essential for protecting our economy and communication systems. The Space Force safeguards these assets, recognizing the importance of space defense. However, it is important to acknowledge an uncontrolled arms race. Kaku also highlights covert U.S. moon exploration efforts. Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos are two visionaries who are promoting space exploration. Musk aims to establish a multi-planet society, expanding human presence beyond Earth. Bezos envisions the Earth as a pristine park, moving heavy industries to space for a cleaner planet. However, the growing role of private actors in space activities presents challenges, including the proliferation of space debris and legal gaps in regulating private entities' actions. This necessitates re-evaluating international space law to accommodate the changing landscape of space exploration. The growing importance of private actors also has other types of consequences, less visible but equally significant. The need for outer space law began in the late 1950s with the start of the space race between the US and the Soviet Union. Shortly after the 1957 launch of Sputnik, the first artificial satellite, to boost international cooperation on issues relating to activities in outer space, the United Nations conceived a legal framework to govern these activities through five international treaties. Given that only states were active in outer space when space law began to form, the emergence of space activity did not entail private actors. Consequently, international space law as a whole is not furnished with adequate methods to enforce its provisions upon them. Contemporaneously, space exploration stands as a subject of paramount interest globally. The exploration of space will go ahead, and it is one of the great adventures of all time. Nearly every day heralds news of recent space missions and milestones, spanning both national and international domains. Enterprising magnates such as Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, and Richard Branson are passionate advocates for outer space endeavors, substantially contributing to this renaissance through the financial patronage of their respective enterprises and activities in outer space. Private investment, technological advancement, and flourishing public intrigue have revived our collective fascination with outer space. Many nations actively participate in space endeavors, primarily enhancing their rudimentary communication and navigational capacities to stay on a date with neighboring regions. Adversaries are at the vanguard of developing technologies that challenge U.S. and allied space systems and services. The diminishing costs of space launch services have underpinned a high proliferation of entities propelling objects into space, enabling numerous nations to acquire sophisticated technologies and strengthen their domestic space industries. The increased commercialization and affordability of space technologies signify that satellites are no longer the exclusive competence of a select framework of space adventurous powers. Presently, over 50 countries and multinational organizations claim to or are actively engaged in operating space-based assets. The area on the farthest part of the moon is known as the dark side. This side receives sunlight just like other parts of the moon, but while there has been a lot of exploration of the moon's near side, the dark side tends to be left out. Nevertheless, the moon's dark side has several characteristics that set it apart and make it especially interesting. One notable attribute of the dark side is that it is mainly shielded from radio signals that come from and go back to Earth. This is because of the moon's rotational movement relative to Earth's. With this unique trait, the moon's dark side is an optimal spot for radio astronomy and unobstructed space explorations. There is little to no terrestrial interference here, which means that the region can serve as an optimal location for anyone looking to do any exploration. Photos of the dark side of the moon that have been taken and shared with us also show that the region looks considerably different from the body's nearer side, 
and appears to have more craters than the closer side, as well as the much more rugged terrain. We should also note the fact that the South Pole Aitken Basin, one of the most notable impact craters on the Moon, is located on the dark side as well. This region holds a bunch of topographical significance, offering a window into the formative history of the Moon, as well as the forces that shaped it into what it is today. With its geological attributes and ancient impact sites, the Moon's dark side offers a significant amount of invaluable insight into the Moon and how it came to be. By studying this region, researchers have learned much more about the catering process and the general history of the Moon and Solar System. Many experts also believe that this far side of the Moon could be a focal point for future exploration and research, especially into the origins of the Moon and its significance to our Solar System in general. Already there are plans to get more out of this dark side of the Moon. A few years ago, NASA instituted the Aitken program, which, amongst other things, aims to explore the dark side of the Moon better and examine some of its intricacies. As humanity's pursuit of lunar exploration continues, the lunar dark side holds great significance. This is the part of the Moon where Michael has slipped into, and instantly, communication was cut off, confirming that the Moon's dark side does cut off all radio signals from and to the Earth. Interestingly, this was one of the first instances of radio silence, where someone is left in a complete state of being unable to communicate with anyone else. He eventually ventured out of that region and claimed that he was beyond relieved to be able to establish communication lines with his base back at home. As for the dark side of the moon, there have already been some developments with that region and its accessibility. Back in 2019, the China National Space Association launched a program called Chang'e 4 that sent a probe into the dark side of the moon. The space probe achieved a soft landing between the von Karman crater, which is located in the South Pole Aitken Basin. This marked the first time that a soft landing had been achieved in this region, offering an opportunity for additional exploration of this area. What did they discover during this time? What happened? What do aliens have to do with this mission? It is no news that the NASA astronauts aboard the Apollo 11 mission were left at their own devices for a few minutes due to malfunctions when they landed on the moon. NASA tried to hide this embarrassing incident for a long time. As the lunar modules approached the moon, two modules of the automatic control system failed, and there were control issues. Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin could handle the situation on their own. Despite the setbacks, the Eagle landing module safely touched the moon due to the team's exceptional skills. The television audience, of course, remained unaware of this development the whole time. Officially, everything went smoothly. Neil and Aldrin were brimming with adrenaline and were so excited that they decided to skip their scheduled rest period before venturing out onto the surface of the moon. All of these were unknown to the public until several decades later. NASA faced heavy criticism for attempting to portray the perfection they lacked. In the years following the historic moon landing, more hidden truths gradually started coming out. There were claims that Neil and Aldrin had encountered enormous spacecraft on the moon. Naturally, the corresponding radio messages were never made public. Yet witnesses in NASA emerged in 1969 who had personally heard these radio communications. Armstrong and Aldrin denied continuously throughout their lives that they had never heard anything of that sort or encountered aliens on the moon. Nevertheless, these cover-ups and multiple views led the people to invalidate the authenticity of the entire moon landing. People began to consider the possibility of extraterrestrial bases on the moon and even treaties with aliens. Dr. Ken Johnston, who worked as a civilian astronaut pilot with NASA during the Apollo landings, and Grumman Corporation, the manufacturers of the lunar mobile that brought the trio to the moon. Due to his remarkable time at NASA, he was compelled to break the silence after he retired from active duty. All of his confessions are astonishing. Johnston claimed he had access to a vast collection of photos and data revealing anomalies and unusual structures on the moon. According to the witness, these images provided evidence of artificial constructs on the moon's surface. He had witnessed how NASA deliberately withheld these images and information, manipulating the photos released to the public to conceal the anomalies. In a bold and rather ridiculous move, Johnston managed to save some pictures from being destroyed, 
preserving them for future generations. Incredibly, his confessions went beyond the existence of artificial constructs, but proceeded to secret space programs and alleged agreements between the US government and extraterrestrial races. One such agreement is called the Edward Agreement for the Preservation of Humanity, which took place on February 20, 1954, between President Dwight Eisenhower and a race known as the Greys. Some sources even claim that the U.S. president at that time granted the Greys permission to regularly abduct and examine individuals on the condition that they would be safely returned with their memories erased. To further prove this fact, there have genuinely been reports of worldwide abductions, consistently involving tiny gray aliens taking people aboard in their spaceships. These victims, if they eventually recover and remember, may be immune to the memory erasing. Stay traumatized as it is almost impossible for anyone to believe them. The next time you think you saw an alien, you probably might have. Allegedly, the past president also shared technology with the aliens and permitted two of their ambassadors, Krill, who is said to be a reptilian creature from the Dragon Constellation, and Drod, who is reportedly a Zeta Reticuli, to reside permanently on Earth. After all of Johnston's findings, he was made to believe that ancient civilizations or extraterrestrial beings may have previously inhabited the moon. Ingo Swan saw the aliens on the moon and reported this in his book, Penetration, which he released in 1998. Swan asserted that his role in the mission was to remotely view the moon's dark side, specifically to investigate the possibility of alien presence. Initially, these claims sounded fictional. However, in 2996, the CIA began releasing documents relating to the Stargate project, and Swan's participation was confirmed. He elaborated that these beings were constructing something on the far side of the moon. According to him, the aliens were not friendly. The late disclosure of this information was because he was forced to remain silent for up to 10 years, the first watch on the moon. A fellow NASA employee, Mike Massimio, knows a secret about that legendary mission that few others do, and Neil deGrasse Tyson pressed him on it during a recent Star Talk podcast. Mr. Tyson, during the session, talked about owning an Omega watch and the Stephen Hawking Award for science communication, being only a year old. He also spoke about how the award had introduced him to Omega watches and that Omega was the first watch on the moon, chosen by NASA. NASA had gotten all the premier watches, such as Rolex, Breitling, and all the top watches of the day, and they put them all in black boxes, scrambling them. Mr. Tyson explained how Omega was chosen as the first watch on the moon. He added that they shook, baked, heated, and radiated them, and at the end of the experiments, the Omega still had the correct time. So Omega is our watch, and the brand still milks that today with their advertising. How interesting. Mr. Massimino then revealed he was wearing the same watch as the one Armstrong did half a century prior. He stated that he was wearing it. They had the Omega watches on the shuttle, and it was explained to us how they won the competition, as it was the crystal that was almost impenetrable. You could do whatever you wanted, and it wouldn't crack. In 2009, Mr. Massimino claimed space fame after becoming the first man to tweet from the cosmos. In the future, the speculations report that NASA may enforce lifelong confidentiality for mission participants. The mystery surrounding the moon landing is very intriguing. Did Swan and Michael see something on the dark side of the moon? Is the moon an alien spacecraft positioned near our planet? Are we safe? Thanks for exploring with us. If you enjoyed this, you will enjoy the next one.